On today's Hot Sheet, I'm discussing the Fannie Mae Home Purchase Sentiment Index and United Van Lines Annual National Movers Study. Might shock you what's in there. Today is Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. This is the anniversary, the one-year anniversary of this show. I am Byron Lazine, and the Hot Sheet starts now. Today marks the one year anniversary of the hot sheet. We started it in week two of last year, 2023, with the goal of doing a daily housing show each and every single day that the stock markets are open and to see if we could pull it off. We were committed to 2023. What we found throughout the process is things like our downloads, some of the charts and uh, you know slides that we've been able to curate from so many great housing analysts across the industry were super valuable. We started to email those to you. Then we started to release just at the end of the year, our hot sheet notes each and every single day. Those are both being released into our BAMX members. Reason to get into BAMX, use code hot to get in. Uh, this is today's hot sheet notes, for example. So real estate agents and professionals can use this information in their market. So we found that the hot sheet wasn't just a show for entertainment or that 24 hour look back for housing, but it actually became something tangible and a resource for many of those, many of you uh, to use. And so we're super proud of that. We're super committed obviously to uh, continuing here in 2024. And it's just an honor to be able to do this with all of you. I see a bunch of you guys chiming in here on the live chat. Thank you, Lenny, for the happy anniversary. Move to the mother load, a hot sheeter for sure. Uh, thank you very much for the happy anniversary. I see you guys are uh, tuning in from all over. We've got Lori from Fairfield CT, obviously anywhere in Connecticut near and dear to my heart, as that's where I am from. Dawn, hot sheeter from uh, coming in from East Texas. So thank you guys. So, so many of you uh, jumping in here today on this one year anniversary, but we've got a lot to cover. If you haven't done if this may be your first Hashi, you haven't uh, done so already, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, because this is the only show on the internet that does what we're about to do, and that's take a 24-hour look back on the housing market each and every single day. And yesterday, Fannie Mae released their consumer uh, report, their home index sentiment report for consumers. So how do our consumers feel right now about the market, Fannie Mae Home Purchase Sentiment Index, the HPSI from Fannie Mae, it increased 2.9 points in the month of December, and it reached a level of 67.2. Uh, any upward trend is what we'll take right now, and hopefully we continue to see, you know, week over week as we collect more data here early in 2024, we see a bounce off of the bottom. Low sentiment, hopefully the bottom is behind us and we continue to move up from here. Uh, when we look at inventory, as we did yesterday on Monday, we do every Monday to start the week. Hopefully the bottom of inventory is behind us. This week alone, we're doing better than the same week last year as it relates to inventory. You can listen to yesterday's hot sheet to get the full analysis on that. But we're looking for more cues. This is another one with the home purchase sen sentiment index from Fannie Mae that quite possibly the bottom the housing recession as coined last year is behind us. Uh, the full HPSI is also up 6.2 points year over year. Okay, so another indicator that, again, we're behind uh, or, or we are now moving forward from a bad housing market or a down housing market. The increase is primarily attributed to a significant rise in the share of consumers who believe what? who believe that mortgage rates will go down over the next 12 months. A survey of 31% of consumers expect mortgage rates to decrease. So three out of 10 of uh, the clientele that you might be working with as a real estate professional expect mortgage rates to decrease. None of us have a crystal ball, but we know what the data is pointing towards, and we can certainly share the data from the past and what we're currently seeing with that group of consumers. While 36% expect rates to remain the same. So 67% of folks, almost seven out of 10, believe that rates are either gonna decrease or remain the same, 
remain the same to me would mean right now sub 7%, uh, which is what we've been experiencing here as of late. Either of those two conditions much more favorable than at times last year when certainly when we hit an eight handle. Uh, 36% uh, remaining the same would leave us obviously with about a third expecting rates to go up. The shift in consumer expectations is attributed to the recent bond market rally and a notable decrease in the 30-year mortgage rates uh, from nearly the 8%. So uh, there you go on expectations. We do have a chart here uh, to show the optimism here for consumers being more optimistic that rates will go down. Uh, and this is a huge shift here. Look at April of 2022, when we all knew rates were going to go up, you were at a 73%, now down again, all the way to 31%, expecting them to go up. If we go to this time last year, you had 52% expecting to go up. So these numbers continue to gradually improve. Uh, and for the first time here um, on the blue level here going down, um, you, for the first time you're actually at a level um, that we haven't seen since 2000. We haven't seen this this high since 2020 when people expected them to go down. And because they were so flat from uh, 2010 to 2020, average of 4% over that time frame, we're, we're in a much better spot there. Um, so... Maybe the, the most bullish on rates going down, now according to this data, than we've been in 10, 15 years on how consumers think about the mortgage interest rate. And if that's the expectation, momentum can be a big thing in markets. Uh, consumer sentiment, consumer feelings on the market can mean a lot to how the market plays out in any given year. This could be a headwind for the housing market. Mortgage rate optimism increased dramatically this month. A uh, survey of high share consumers anticipating mortgage rate declines over the next year. Mark Palum, uh, Vice President, Deputy Chief Economist at Fannie Mae. The significant shift uh, in consumer expectations comes on the heels of the recent bond market rally. Uh, significant downtick of the 30-year mortgage rates. They're high of nearly 8% in November to 6.62 past week. That's up a little bit now, obviously, to 6.75. Notably, homeowners and higher income groups reported uh, greater, higher optimism than renters. In fact, for the first time in our national Housing survey history, more homeowners on net believe mortgage rates will go up than down. So there is, uh, just digging through the data, the punchline that more people uh, in the history of collecting this data, homeowners specifically on net, believe rates are going down. Great headwind for the market. Where are the winds blowing movers? Okay, United Van Lines comes out with their annual national mover study every single year and it captures headlines and the imagination of many in different markets to say, hey, this is happening. This is always going to happen, meaning you know, people are either moving in or out of a specific location. I want to caution everybody on the annual 2023 United Van Lines National Mover Studies. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you why and show you some differences between how they correlate their numbers and how others if you just look at you know headlines um nationally you're going to see you know fox or cnn or all, all these you know folks pick this up and they're going to make the claim that when and according to united van lines um this is their data okay let, let's take a step back united van lines study their annual 2023 uh national mover study is it's their 47th annual national mover study and it reveals where and why americans moved in 2023 but this is based off of their data and so this is important when um you know somebody one of your somebody in your database one of your clients one of your consumers comes to you and says you know this is where everybody's moving or they're all moving out of here and this is a fact because i saw a headline on fox business this is where it becomes your job to break down, hey, which article did you see, um, and and understand where the data is coming from. You know how how they their methodology is based on household moves handled by UniGroup, uh, which is the parent company of United Van Lines, within the forty eight uh, con, uh, contigu contiguous states and the Washington D.C. So so you don't have obviously Hawaii and uh, Alaska in there. So states are classified as high inbound or high outbound or balanced based on the percentages of total moves. Uh, 
okay, so since 1977, they've annually tracked these migration platforms. So patterns rather. So let, let's just go to the top 10. I'll go right into our, you know, we've got this thing really broken down um, pretty well for you in the hot sheet notes. Use code hot to, to get into BAMX so you get act the best of BAM uh, like these hot sheet notes. Uh, so they, they've got Vermont at number one. Okay, Vermont remains the top inbound state for the third consecutive year. You may be like, what? Vermont? Really? I thought it was one of the Sunbelt states. Um, Arkansas, West Virginia, new additions to the top inbound list for 2023. So Vermont, D Washington, D.C. Hey, by the way, Washington, D.C. at two wouldn't surprise me based on, you know, every time we look at the jobs report every single month, what's the leader in uh, jobs? It's it's the government uh, hiring. So that that's not surprising to me. If you people are going to move to where the jobs are. Uh, South Carolina, number three, Arkansas, four, Rhode Island, five, North Carolina, six, South Dakota, seven, Alabama, eight, number nine, New Mexico, number 10, West Virginia. And you're probably just like, where are the big ones, the big names that I continuously hear? Well, remember, this is United Van Lines data. And when we look at um, these numbers here, when we, when we look at uh, the percentage of inbound versus outbound, they're going off a percentage. Some of these headlines are going to say more people are moving into Vermont than anywhere else. Well, no, 65% of the moves in Vermont. And, and if we go, this is a great, we have this all linked up for you in BAMX. You know, if we go to uh, the interactive chart, I love the chart that they do here. Um, you, you see here that the total inbound at the top right is 65.5%. That's the highest number. It's a buy a percentage. So it's not that the most thousands of people moved into Vermont, which is a lot of what these, there's a specific Fox business headline out there that'll lead you to believe that. Um, it's by the percentage of they had more inbound than outbound than any other state net net. So total outbound 34 and a half percent. Reasons for moving uh, into Vermont uh, the leader would be family at 28.6%, lifestyle 20%, job 20%, retirement 14.3%. So pretty balanced there. You have uh, the the biggest age group would be 65 and older at 37.9%. And then 55 to 64 is 24%. By the way, if you want me to click on a specific state on the United Van Lines, uh, quickly before I move to how this differs from the U-Haul study, which they differ quite a bit, drop a um, drop a state into the comments and, and, I, and I'll jump in there, okay? Uh, 150,000 or more uh, moving into Vermont is 50% there, but you still, you have 57% uh, uh, of that same income category moving out. Um, so you've got a hot, lot of higher net worth making uh, the moves in and out. One of the uh, locations that you would think uh, would be at the top, Florida, 56.9%, um, so a high inbound state, uh, but not making their top 10. The numbers, because of the sheer population in these places, uh, is, is going to be um, much more significant than of a, a, a Vermont. And that's where you'll see how it differs in U-Haul. We'll get to that in just a second. Um, but Florida here, uh, let's go to reasons for moving. Why did so many people move to Florida? Well, 29% uh, retirement, 19.6% uh, family. You're seeing this actually in Florida quite a bit where you might have, you know, some, somebody in a... Um, non-retirement age moving to be closer to their folks okay and and if they can get this the job 16 and a half percent moving for job then it matches up uh lifestyle 17 percent there uh people the reason people move out of florida though would be family 38.6 percent of the outbound moves citing family as the reason uh the age range is 40 percent or 65 and older 26 percent 55 to 64 and you see 16%, 45 to 54, and just 10%, uh, just 16% uh, under 40. For income, 48.7% uh, of the inbound moves are making 150,000 or more uh, moving into Florida. I think we saw Virginia on the list. Let's go to Virginia. Uh, primary. So Virginia is a. Virginia is what they would consider an, a balanced state because they're just under 55%. Total inbound is 54.2% of the moves. 
total outbound is 45.8% of the moves. These are the moves that United Van Lines um, covers. Just um, b- before I, I go into Virginia, just to one of the reasons I don't like this study, United Van Lines, is if we go back to Florida, for example, I'm going to go right back to Virginia here in a second. All right. But if we go back to Florida, th- this total inbound number, I would imagine, is is actually higher uh, the numbers are probably higher in a state like this. When you look at any other study, it shows you that you know Florida is in the top handful of states that folks are moving to, and that's been a trend not since COVID, but it started even before COVID. Okay, now one of the reasons why United Van Lines might not have accurate data on this is a lot of people that move into Florida aren't packing up the old uh, United Van Van Line or the the truck. They're just going down there and they're buying a furnished house and they're buying new stuff or whatever the case may be. Or they have a second. When I moved to Florida, when I switched my primary residence to Florida, um, as I sit here in my Connecticut studio today, I in during COVID, I didn't use a um, moving service. I, I kept my Connecticut house. So that's one of the reasons. But I didn't really move anything down there. I took a couple trips with a car back and forth over that first year and moved some some things like a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle or maybe a couple of those that I didn't want to risk moving any other way but I didn't I didn't go out and use one of these services and I and I think you have a lot of that in Florida you, especially you know I, I talked to a lot of people from the Midwest for example moving to South Florida and th- they're in that retirement group they're in this you know 29% that are moving for retirement they're in this age category of certainly 55 and over which is 65 67% of the uh, folks moving to Florida and they sold everything and they came down and started on a clean slate, bought everything, you know, brand new moved in the furniture and all of that. So that, that does kind of skew the numbers just a little bit. Let's move back into Virginia here. Uh, Primary reason for moving would be family and job job being the leader at 32% uh, for the inbounds Uh, job would also be the primary reason for folks leaving uh, Virginia. The age category is a little bit more balanced than what we were looking at in Florida on the inbound. And then uh, income, 150000 or more inbound, leading 52.5%. But it's the same, essentially, on the outbound moves. Uh, yes, Alex, Pappy, uh, not as very good, very good Pappy Van Winkle is. But uh, if I could ever find a, another bottle of the Yellowstone Limited Edition, I will take that all day long and it's a, at a much cheaper price uh let's go to oregon we see somebody here in the chat aaron wants to check out oregon uh primary reason for moving would be job at 31 percent plus and then family uh primary uh, percentage for outbound moves is family at 28.8 and job 24 percent um the highest uh age range for inbound 33.8 percent being 65 and over uh same age for outbound and then the highest income inbound would be 48.6% at 150,000 or more. Man, a lot of people making 150,000 or more these days, it appears. Uh, Kelly wants to see California. No problem over there. Let's take a, a look at California. California being the flip of kind of what we we're looking at with a Vermont or a Florida. Total outbound moves as documented by United uh, Van Lines is 57.5% while total inbound would be 42.5%. So United Van Lines would consider California heavier on the outbound side, a a heavier outbound state, okay? So uh, reasons people left California, family 28.6%, job 22%, um, and then everything else is pretty much balanced there. A primary reason for moving into California overwhelmingly on the inbound moves is job at almost 41 percent uh the leading age look at the age group for inbound california very balanced maybe the most balanced we've seen and then outbound uh you see these retiree ages california uh leaving probably uh you know tax purposes there maybe a cheaper retirement you do see this is an overwhelming trend when you look at migration patterns like where can i be in a more affordable uh, you know, place to live. And that's important for retirees. You've got 33 and a half percent of 65 and older leaving um, or as the age group that's leaving California. Uh, income, 
uh, you know, California, you got to make a lot of money to live in California. So there you go on that one. Uh, what else did we have here? Wisconsin. All right. Um, let's take a look at Wisconsin. Wisconsin primary reason uh, to move into Wisconsin would be family and job, 38 and 31% respectively. Um, Wisconsin super balanced, total inbound 49.5%, total outbound 50.5%. 50, 50 um, job would be the reason for people leaving. You've got, you do have a inbound uh, 55 and 65 and older that are leading. So an older demo that is coming in to uh wisconsin but that's those are also the leaders for the outbound moves and then uh income you see similar story man everybody that are making these state by state moves not everybody obviously uh you can see the numbers here but there are big percentages almost 50 percent of folks that make an inbound state move just off of what we're looking at now or an outbound state move are uh are making 150,000 or more. So that tells you how expensive it is to make a move out of state or, uh, you know, whether you're moving out of state or going into a new, you know, outbound or inbound to a new state. Here's, a, here's something that I found um, interesting this morning from the U.S. Census Bureau. Uh, this is on a, a site called The Zebra, but they're sourcing U.S. Census Bureau. In 1988, 3.2% of Americans migrated to another state in search of new job or life. Today, Americans are actually moving less. That this is so US Census Bureau has la lagging data. So we're when we're saying today, we're talking 2018. A lot has changed in the world since 2018. And I'm certain that these percentages went up during COVID. Um, but according to US Census Bureau in 2018, so you could see where the trend went from 1988 to 2018. Only 1.5 percent of Americans moved from one state to another and then you see the trend of just the last year united uh van line study here says that you really you know the folks that are doing this are making a significant amount of money uh to be able to make these out-of-state moves let's take a look at tennessee i see that in the chat uh tennessee is uh a little bit heavier on, on the inbound, so consider it a stronger inbound state, 55.3%, total outbound, 44.7%. Uh, job and family are the leading primary reasons for moving inbound, while family and job are also the primary reasons for folks who are uh, leaving the state. You do see a significant um, grouping in the 55 to 64 year age and 65 and older. That makes up over 62% of the inbound moves for Tennessee. Did I miss any of those? Uh, I don't think I did. Maybe we had Virginia, we had Oregon, did Wisconsin, we did Florida, uh, well, Washington, D.C. Let's do D.C. because D.C. was one of the top inbound states. Total inbound for D.C. is 63.3%, while total outbound 36.7%. I mentioned the you know, jobs data that we continue to look at each and every week. We looked at a whole bunch of jobs data last week and DC, for example, is, you know, more government as a category rather, uh, is really, uh, on a high earning spree and, and has been so been doing so all year. And you see here, primary reason for moving into DC, 60% of people, uh, say it is the job, okay? But also, out of that 36.7% of total outbound people, 51.7% are leaving uh, because of job. Now, uh, age ranges, you've got a much more younger demo on the inbound moves DC than maybe any other state we've looked at. You've got 33, This that's good for the future. You know, if I'm a real estate investor or uh, professional in the District of Columbia, I'm looking at all the young people moving in. I'm saying we got a long run here. 33.4% uh, are from 18 to 34, 16.7% are 35 to 44, and 26.7% are 45 to 54. Uh, and, and so there you go on DC. Now let's compare this study to um to the U-Haul one. It's gonna it's going to differ, okay, quite a bit. All right. Uh just to just to recap here before we move into U-Haul, I'll go back to the, the hot sheet show notes, which this will be available for every everybody inside of BAM X. Uh, the top inbound states moving in, according to United Van Lines data, Vermont, DC, 
South Carolina, Arkansas, Rhode Island, North Carolina, South Dakota, Alabama, New Mexico, and West Virginia. Now, the top outbound states moving out. Jersey was the lead for the top outbound state for the sixth consecutive year. Not surprising there. Uh, so Jersey, Illinois, North Dakota, New York, Michigan. By the way, congrats to any Michigan Wolverine fans out there for winning the national championship in college football last night beating Washington, Michigan on the list at five. Maybe that'll slow down now that they're champions. First time since 97, California at six, Massachusetts at seven and Kansas at eight. Okay. So let's take a look at how this differs from U-Haul's list, which U-Haul's list seems to hit the national trend uh, more so than I've seen. You know, when I see all these other reports, U-Haul seems to hit uh, the trend at a high, you know, closer to what they're doing. So U-Haul calculates growth by each state's net gain or loss of one-way equipment from customer transactions in a year. So you say, hey, I want a U-Haul in um, New Jersey, and I'm taking it to South Carolina, and I'm not bringing it back. It's staying in South Carolina. So one-way equipment from customer transactions in a calendar year, the U-Haul growth index is compiled from more than 2.5 million one-way U-Haul truck, trailer, and U-Box moving container transactions that occur, occur annually across the U.S. and Canada, while one-way transactions in 2023 be, remained below, interesting here, one-way transactions in 2023 remained below the record-breaking levels we witnessed immediately following the pandemic, we continue to see many of the same geographical trends from U-Haul customers moving between states, meaning where they're moving to. Migration uh, to states in the Southeast and the Southwest is still very pronounced. And that's what you typically hear, okay? And so let's look at uh, the 2023 U-Haul growth states. You don't have Florida at number one. Maybe you expected that, but it is number two because Texas is number one. These are the states here that you typically will hear the most growth, the most sheer number of people populating and migrating into. You've got Texas at one, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee. There's there's your top five according to U-Haul. Very different than United Van Lines and how they're coming up with their data. Idaho, Washington, Arizona, Colorado, and Virginia make up the top 10. While Nevada, now Vermont, interestingly enough, moved up from 30th last year on U-Haul all the way to number 12, which is United Van Lines number one by percentages of inbound. Uh, Vermont at number 12, Utah at 13, Wyoming at 44, uh, 44 up, uh, at 14, up from 33, Delaware at 15, New Mexico, Arkansas, Georgia, South Dakota, and Minnesota coming in. Uh, to top out the top 20 here. Here are the biggest climbers uh, for the year U-Haul rankings. Arkansas moved up 26 spots. Okay, so Arkansas ended up at 17. As we just said, they moved up 26 spots. spots. Wyoming went up 19 spots. Vermont went up the 18 spots, as mentioned. Washington went up 16 spots. Delaware went up 12 spots. South Dakota went up 12 spots. Uh, the biggest year over year, Decliners, Oregon fit down 15 spots, Connecticut down 14, Pennsylvania down 14, Ohio down 14, Missouri down 13, and Indiana down 13 spots. I wanted to get to um, this here, the U.S. Census Bureau. This shows a similar trend. Florida, Texas, Arizona, North Carolina, South Carolina. It's where I mentioned the, uh, two, the 1988 to 2018 numbers. And uh, it just shows you here that this has been an overall trend where folks are migrating to uh, leading up for quite some time and one that many of the builders continue to bet on if you look at where uh, where all the national builders are placing their bets, okay? Wall Street is placing bets on what's going to happen with the economy, and you see that the 10-year is still sticking up here over four as we enter today. As we await CPI data on Thursday, I'm looking forward to covering that with all of you. But there is some hesitancy. You can feel it here in the market of what's going on with the economy. Uh, that's obviously going to impact the 30-year throughout the week. We're just hovering around the six and the three-quarter range. We ticked down 
uh, to start the week from ending the week at 6.75 the week prior to 6.74 here uh, here this this week, okay? Uh, or here yesterday. If, um, if you're an agent, by the way, and you want uh, three free lead sources, we have a webinar today at 3 o'clock. Haley, today at 3 o'clock, am I right when I say that? Today at 3 o'clock, the link will be, it'll be in the chat, but it'll also be down below. It's a free webinar for three free lead sources. You absolutely do not want to miss this. Tom Story, uh, who's done so much, you know, with with everybody here in the BAM community, show, sharing his YouTube strategies, his listing appointment strategies, is on his game for this. So three free lead sources and how to actually use them. It's a can't miss event. Uh, make sure that you are up for that webinar. That'll be today at three to get the most out of BAM. Of course, make sure you're a BAMX member. Use code HOT and you'll get the 10% off of that. I've got a Jex. I've got to record the real word, which will be up today at two o'clock. And we are going to cover what the heck happened yesterday with the president of NAR now stepping down only, I don't know, f less than five months into her tenure. We have three presidents in the last five months over at the National Association of Realtors. Uh, we're going to cover that. We've got Jason Heber coming on, uh, who started the NAR Accountability Project today. We never have guests on The Real Word, but like, hey, we've got to do that. We're going to talk about the declining uh, numbers that just came out as well for NAR membership. So that's a podcast you do not want to miss the real world today here on the live channel or on the main channel at two o'clock make sure you subscribe for that until then toodaloo